Okay, so this is recap of day 88, log 5. It was around 12 p.m. I think when I was sitting beside Jenna at her desk. So that's where she usually places her laptop. Just that it in the past technically it was both hers and Nabila's laptop. And Nabila in this case is the inbound admin before me. Uh, of course she's gone already. She's not. She's no longer in the in the company. Uh, of course, when it uh, comes to Jenna, right? I noticed one thing that she likes to do a lot is to just blast out Man Mando Pop from her phone speakers. Maybe because she likes to use YouTube a lot, and then she blasts it from there. I'm not sure if she uses Spotify or not. But one thing I know is that she can definitely blast from YouTube. And she does blast metal pop over the speakers, at her desk area, whenever she feels like it. And it's pretty much an everyday thing. Maybe that's one thing that inspires her to, to continue or helps her to enjoy her work. And it's become a almost a daily habit. I have no issues with that, you know. Because I'm not in a position to judge her about it. And second, because I don't find anything that is, you know, uh, remotely annoying or disturbing to have Mandel Pop around. But that's not the point. Because she has a certain uh, liking for Mandel Pop, I thought it might be a conversational topic to, you know, just get chatting with her so maybe uh, curiosity got the better of me and I decided to just go go on ahead with it lah. little did I know she has three favourite actresses I think I've got the names already um, maybe I'll see if I can find them but um, one thing is I think they're all uh, PRC uh, she's not a supporter of local any local metal pop acts because mainly, well, most of them are either uh, from where? Mainland China, Taiwanese, those kind of Mando pop. So, she likes that kind of stuff. Yep. So she'll blast that on her phone speakers. Now, of course, I think at, at one point, we just had to get our lunch. So, sometimes when it comes to food, uh, she can be very indecisive. There were a few times when she uh, got, I think she offered to get like Jolly Bean and grab food with uh, some of the other folks like Annan, Wen Hao, Alex as well. I mean, these guys have stuck together way long, long before I joined the company, so maybe their friendship uh, dates. I don't know how long exactly dates back. Maybe at least half a year. But one thing I do know is that uh, Jenna can be very indecisive when it comes to this uh, figuring out figuring out what she wants to eat. Well, in short, uh, Jenna sometimes she can't decide what she wants to eat. So never mind, small issue. I said I told her, you know what? Never mind. I just go out and and buy my uh, lunch first. Then you just want to meet. Uh, if if you really made up your mind on what you want to eat, so it takes me about I think seven eight minutes to walk from the third floor of the warehouse all the way to the Kopitiam nearby, and I go straight to the, to the Saifan store first, and then I the first thing I did was obviously to take pictures of some of the dishes that were there. I think she also likes spicy stuff so she picked a couple of uh, she picked about maybe two or three dishes from the pictures that I sent to her and from there I got my dinner she got hers I bought I offered to help her buy uh, I think was it iced tea or iced lemon tea and then I bought ice milo is that correct? yeah maybe uh, so those were the drinks that I got 
bought everything, the food, the drinks. We went up to the second floor pantry and from there we just started, you know, dining and having our lunch. Lah. The conversation, there was not much conversation until she started to share about how she used to work at Shopee and USS. And quite interestingly enough, uh, in her experience as US, at USS, she worked part-time as more of a ride operator, but sometimes she was also the usher, and, you know, a bit of an all-rounder, also helped to usher the guests around. But, but there were some incidents that you know, stood out, particularly on the Battlestar Galactica roller coasters, Human and Cylon that she did share with me and she felt it was very entertaining or uh, that it, it, it sort of for her it, was, it stood out lah. the first one is not as say as good as the second one to her uh, it was mainly this uh, handicapped Amor who was very insistent who insisted on riding the Cylon even though handicap lah so you ride the Cylon it's much more vig- is more vigorous than the human one so o- obviously it's a sign of concern to the staff there you don't want any any cases of negligence that they want to get that uh, it are re- being reported against the staff by whoever it is so at that point I think it was a little bit weird that uh they insisted on getting up themselves. Uh, the, the, sorry, the handicap. Amor, she wanted that she wanted or insisted on getting onto the ride herself. I think with a little help from her sister beside her, who also wanted to ride the uh, roller coaster. Um, but thankfully, uh, everything still worked out fine. There weren't like any major injuries or things like that, you know. Sometimes you get different people who are here and there, but majority of the guests I think will be very compliant, safe for a few who are just being mischievous or you know just not acting in the civil manner maybe is that the correct word civil manner just just not like the other guests lah. so that leads us to the second incident which involves a couple of well i think they were poly students who were on their short-term break and of course one of the students went tried to climb over the barrier for the cold roller coasters and of course jenna was the first i think was the first of the employees of the USS staff, the ride operate the ride operators there who noticed it. And she wasted no time in telling that particular student off uh, about the potential danger she could cause to herself and others. And of course then probably her colleagues saw saw it ha- all happening and they went forth and joined forces with Jenna and just screwed this student upside down left right um, about the same thing and of course Jenna said it was very shook you know to be able to do that because you just have some people who, who can't learn to listen and they just needed they just needed that to be taught a lesson uh, in one way or another then some reason as a part-timer she also there were times when you know they had to get off their shift and sometimes they wanted to just enjoy the rides on their own so when everyone had gone they would just sit if they were the last ride operators there would be one person left who could not sit on the ride because he had to be the operator and everyone else you know got to sit and enjoy the ride as they went along stuff like that in in a way Jenna was getting free rides if she wasn't the last person uh, to operate la, 
or the last person to leave and take charge of uh, turning off all the rides and, and, and things like that. And then she also shared that uh, sometimes as a USS employee, there are lots of things to be learned, especially when it comes to navigating the rides, showing people how to go to where, how to go to which attractions, knowing how to operate all the attractions. Obviously, that comes with uh, on-job training, uh, stuff like that. And the funny benefit about this, about having such a job, is that part-timers actually earn more than full-timers. So you would be discouraged from earning full-time, from taking a job full-time, and would be better off going for a part-time job, uh, going going for this working part-time in this place because you would earn better money but it seems rather strange right it should be other it traditionally it should be other, should be the other way around because full-timers should get usually get more benefits than part-timers traditionally speaking but USS just somehow uh, according to Jenna uh, flips it the other way around so with that I think we pretty much concluded uh, what uh, the composi- conversation was all about lah. and it sort of gave me an insight as to what a USS employee might do although it can differ slightly here and there based on you know uh, different testimonies I might hear but I can probably take Jenna's one to be a bit more of a generic a bit more generic maybe that's about it but it's pretty but yeah that's pretty much it for the log 5 and I think there might be more interesting things to come along when it comes to working with Jenna we'll have to see how everything goes